In this episode of Automower Answers, we're going to take a look at the rear collision problem error message. Now, if you're familiar with our video of collision active and how to diagnose and solve that issue, then this is going to be relatively simple for you. And yes, this is something that most of the time you can solve on your own. You might just have to order the part from your dealer, but it doesn't necessarily involve taking your mower to the dealer and dropping it off. So you do it yourselfers out there. Here you go. Here's your opportunity to shine. Since diagnosing this issue starts out just like diagnosing the collision active issue and because we're on a bit of a tight budget and we never have any time for anything we decided since we have that old footage we would just recycle it so here's how you start out to diagnose the rear collision issue and the collision active issue if you've never experienced that one okay the first thing you want to do is grab all four corners of the body Make sure that all four of those are secured to the joysticks underneath. Um, in this case, they are. But I'll show you here. Let me, uh, let me pop this body up off of here to give you an idea. Like here in the back corner, if this wasn't secured, you're going to have an extra bit of flop there. The back will feel as loose as the front feels. Um, in the front side, they do move a little bit because that's your, your lift sensors. But there you go, we don't snap them. Um, that's with both of them off. You can see it moves an excessive amount. Let me clip that one on. But over here, you can see it'll lift up kind of, it lifts up kind of crooked because it's not snapped in. So just go around, push down on all four corners where the joysticks are at. Make sure you don't hear a snap sound. If you do, it means the body was lifted up off of the, um, the joystick sensor is there, just snap it back on, see if that solves your problem. If not, then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, the next step um, is to just lift the machine up in front here. You can see underneath here, you got the, on a 450, all three of these would have wires going through them. Um, we're dealing with the 430, obviously, there's only one wire. So, no matter which mower you have, you wanna pop these out. Just grab a hold it with your finger there pulled out it's just a big heavy duty grommet and the wire connector is back here and like I say on a 450 there'd be wires going through both of these It'd be the same thing just pop them out get to the plugs and uh, disconnect it so now that's disconnected then you sit the mower back down and we're gonna unsnap the body off of the uh, the joystick sensors so give it a tug in the front Give a nice tug in the back and pop that up off of there. So that was some antique footage, huh? So now that we got the body off of this mower, what we want to do is we want to take and just kind of wiggle each joystick sensor around and uh, see if we can tell a difference between the two. If, if one sticks a bit or one's real floppy, kind of get an indication as to which one might be the problem and just kind of work our way up from there. As you can see, this one here, it, tends to stick a little bit so now because this joystick here would stick a bit when we were testing it out um, definitely a big difference between this one and the other one so we're going to take the four screws out here that hold this joystick in place and we're just going to pop that joystick up out of there but whatever you do you want to make sure you have all four of these screws before you lift that out because you don't want to drop them down in there because then you're probably going to split the thing open but Here's all it is. This is the joystick itself. And you can see, yeah, this one here was definitely the issue uh, or has an issue. It's busted off right there at the flange that it, it pivots on. And that's probably why it was getting hung up. Here's the, the cup that it pivots on there. You can see down inside the mower. Now uh, the broken pieces are more than likely laying down in there. It's not a big deal if they remain down in there. Nothing you want to split the mower open for. So this is the new replacement joystick. You can see the part number on top of the box there. And it comes as just the joystick and the nut that goes in that the uh, ball on the top of the joystick threads into. But you notice this new one here, it has a magnet in it. Now the one that we took off that was on 
the right rear of the mower. And when it comes new from the factory, that one actually does not have a magnet in it because it's just kind of a dummy joystick. It's really only used for holding the body on. But the only one you can buy as a replacement is the one that comes with the magnet. So all we got to do now is take the nut that came with the new joystick. We put it in the slot at the top of the joystick because that's where the ball that the body mounts to will thread into. So we got the nut in there, and then we just got to take off this ball on the end, transfer it over the new one, and the rubber boot behind the ball has to be taken off of the old one and transferred onto the new joystick as well. So we get all that done, and we'll throw this new joystick in there and be good to go. So as you can see here, we got our new joystick on the right side, the broken one on the left side, and that's a pretty good chunk that's missing out of that flange on that, on that broken one that we pulled out of the mower. So what would happen here is when that broken joystick would get pushed to the side or the front or however the body would move, it would tend to jam up. And yeah, that one didn't have a sensor on it, but because it was connected to the body, it was actually pulling and holding the other one on the right side that has the sensor in it into a position to trip that alarm and say that there was a rear collision problem. So here we pulled out the joystick on the right side just to show you what's down in there. You can see that green thing down in there. It's actually a little circuit board. And that works in conjunction with the uh, magnet in the end of the joystick. And what happens is when that magnet passes by there, it changes the signal that that circuit board receives. And that's how we get our error messages. So you got four different joysticks on the auto mower, at least on the 430s and 450s. On the 300 series, you only have three joysticks. But on the 400 series, you have the four different joysticks but only three of those are actually sensors. That one on the left that we had that was broken is, like we said, just a dummy to help mount the body to. But because that body is rigid, it pulls on all those other sensors if something like this happens where that joystick gets jammed to the side or front or back, however. So it's going to activate the sensors in the other joysticks and help tell the mower that there is a problem and something needs done about it. So we got these all back together, but one thing you want to do is just every once in a while, pull that cover off of there and clean all that dry grass out of there and make sure there's nothing in there kind of pushing on those sensors so it doesn't give you a false reading and tell you that there's something wrong with it when there really isn't. It's just dirty under there. So now I'm sure the big question is, what would cause one of these sensors to break like this? Well, that could be a number of things, but a few of the obvious ones are the mower got lodged under something because these wheel motors have a good bit of torque, so it could push that body you know, a, a decent amount under something. So if you have your car parked in the yard or, you know, in the driveway and the mower goes across the driveway, eventually it could end up forcing that thing under there to where it could break it. Um, if it runs, you know, into your deck or a fence post, you know, or under a fence, something like that, things like this over and over again can slowly cause that to weaken and break. Another thing could be, you know, maybe one of your animals, like a dog, if you have a Rottweiler or something, jumped on it, or somebody stepped on it, or who knows, you know, some kind of uh, just hard hit to that back corner could do something like this. Or maybe you bumped it with your vehicle. I've seen that plenty of times. And people always wonder, why does it have headlights if it's a robotic mower? Why does it need to see where it's going? No, 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 no. That's for you to see where it's going so you don't run over it, so you don't step on it, so you don't trip over it because they run so quiet. And just a little public service announcement for those of you that don't know, never peel off this sticker right here because as you can see, it just says void all over it. That right there is your warranty. There it goes. It doesn't matter what problem you have from there on out. Once that is peeled off, it is void and you will not receive warranty compensation for anything with this mower. So this is going to wrap up another edition of Automower Answers. Hopefully this helps you out and keeps you from a costly repair bill and gets you back out and mowing pretty quick. So any questions or comments, feel free to drop us a comment on this video. You can always reach us at automowerinfo at gmail.com. And if you like what you see here, always, always, always be sure to subscribe, pass these videos on to your friends, things like that. And we'll be talking to you soon. Thanks for watching.